Now, these are the sensors that are tracking. Let's talk about haptics. Exactly. Yeah, this is new, coming out in Q1 of next year. Um, Always showing it off at the events. It's a linear resonant actuator, LRA. Mm -hmm. So the same fiber motor you would find in a mobile phone. Uh, and it provides sensory feedback back to the user. So let's say you're in a teleoperation setting, the robot has pressure sensors in their hand, uh, and then you map the input from those pressure sensors to the output on the haptic. On that, and then you know. Yeah. yeah, so we modulate intensity. So the harder you press, the more vibrations you would feel. Or if you're in a simulated environment, you do it based on detection. So uh, uh, yeah, collision detection, uh, so that when you touch the objects, you get a vibration you know, exactly. or you do interpenetration or the amount of force you're applying. Uh, and that really helps with that perception in virtual reality. So if you're in a simulation environment, you know, I touch the object, I grab the object, I release the object, sort of like a virtual mouse tree. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, when are we going to have Ready Player One level of happiness? When do you think that's going to happen? When we reinvent physics. Okay. So. Okay. The, the thing with the human hand, and that's always something that really uh, amazes me, is we have so much sensory input mm -hmm. in our hands. For four, and four sensors, we can feel direction. We can, uh, when you're holding an object, you can sense if you're slipping, and yeah. then in your nervous system, make the decision if or you are gonna like tighten your grip or release it. Mm -hmm. uh, all those sensory inputs all sit within the hand. So whenever you would want to put haptics, it's always going to be external to the hands. And then those external factors are going to limit your range of motion if you don't get them down to like the micron level. Almost everyone's hand is the same as far as the bone structure, but the lengths are all different. So how do you calibrate from one hand to another? Yeah, so when we do the calibration steps, it consists of four different mm -hmm. motions. So one is laying it completely flat. And because we know the distance mm -hmm. between a source and the sensor, we can measure for each individual finger what the length is. Right. And that then feeds into our inverse kinematic system to know where the joint or what the joint angle of each individual okay. link okay. in that chain is. Sure, sure. So how do you know exactly where your knuckle is? So we utilize something called the golden ratio. So we have which, which we've talked about before, the Fibonacci. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. All right, we're here with Martin from Manus, which makes data capture gloves. Indeed. And we did um, a podcast about a week or so ago where we had seen this based on a post that you guys put out on X, talking about this, this particular glove and sort of the accuracy we get with data capture. Because anyone who wants to do teleoperation, it's easy to kind of capture the movement of your arm not so easy to capture your fingers. There's many different techniques that are used. You're going to be really interested in how you're able to do it because a lot of the other data capture routines kind of fall flat. Yeah. So, give us a tour. Yeah, first off, I really want to thank you for the episode. It was really a lot of fun okay. to see you guys right. pick apart and trying to find the rationale of mm -hmm. how things work and how things operate. So, what makes a gloss unique is that Instead of using IMUs or bend sensors or stretch sensors or anything, we create an electromagnetic field. So it's right. based on electromagnetic field. Like source that sits in here, passive sensors that sit on the fingertip, and we measure in absolute space where the tip of the finger is, both position and rotation, in relation to the base unit. That right. Sure, sure. That makes sense. So... Because fingers are totally deterministic, if you know the position and rotation, we can calculate backwards using inverse kinematics what the rest band is doing. So that's basically yeah. what so we do. So it's basically, yeah, in concept, pretty simple. Yeah. And, and so, so it's, it, it's more or less really just, difficult. It's, it's, a, it's a GPS system for the fingertips. Basically. Yeah. So, so once you know where they are with respect to some frame, and what's really nice about this is it's locked on there, so you have a really good solid reference. Exactly. So we're going to now know where the fingertips, and in this case, oh, I saw another man in his hand the other day. There was only one. So I see you have a second tracker on here also in the knuckles. That's now the new haptics version. Oh, that's the, this is the haptics? Correct. And, and that's the tracking? Correct. Aha. Uh -huh. So we're going to see something new because I noticed the color was a little bit different, that the other ones were split this way on the color. 
So this is the version. That's, guys. that's the one that we critiqued, right? Correct. And so as you can see, it's kind of the two colors are this way, but now we have the fingers are black, but the palm is white. And you also have some way of being able to track the location of this in space at the same time, correct? Correct. So is this a slot that you would put some sort of tracker on it? Yeah, so this is our universal mounting system. Mm -hmm. So we have mounts for the Quest Tree, uh, um, yeah, so like OptiTrack, the Icon, XSense adapter. So anything you would want to pair with it, mm -hmm. Ultimate Tracker, HTC Tracker, everything fits on. You put it on there. So now you know where this is in the world coordinate system, but these guys are now just telling you where they are with respect to the wrist center. And from that, you can get the world coordinates if you want. But what's yeah. most important is that we know the positions of the fingers very accurately. Okay. Exactly. And that means you have a very good, robust kinematic model of the hand. Yes. That can track all the 25 degrees of freedom of the human hands. Yes. yes. Including the metacarpal bones. Right. Everything. So ever so almost everyone's hand is the same as far as the bone structure, mm -hmm. but the lengths are all different. So Correct. how do you calibrate from one hand to another? Yeah. So when we do the calibration steps, it consists of four different mm -hmm. motions. So one is laying it completely flat. And because we know the distance mm -hmm. between a source and the sensor, we can measure for each individual finger what the length is. Right. And that then feeds into our inverse kinematic system to know where the joint or what the joint angle of each individual okay. link okay. in that okay. chain is. Sure, sure. So how do you know exactly where your knuckle is? So we utilize something called the golden ratio. So we have not Which we've talked about before, the Fibonacci. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So we use anthropomorphic data sets like for the total population and then derive from there what the length of each is. Right. So in, in general population, they'll always have a bell curve. Yes. So, 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 so basically the golden ratio says if I know how long the fingers are, I know how it's broken up because it needs to be able to fold up like that. That's yeah. pretty much why the tips are like that. Okay. Um, so now once you have that, you basically have kind of calibrated where everything is. You, you know the length of each phalanx. Now you can run inverse kinematics on it. And what's interesting is that it's, well, how many degrees of freedom that you want to look at, the, at this robot? It's like a four degree of freedom robot in a way, if you could do standard kinematics, mm -hmm. two joints down here, or do you, you have like a third degree of freedom down at the knuckle? I mean, it kind of is one, but there isn't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and yeah, so, so we can look so, into- So you're more or less looking at the point in space, even though you get the orientation, the orientation is that going to play into the inverse kinematics at all? It, it may, it's probably some extra information that's good to have. W without it, I think it's difficult for you to completely solve the inverse kinematics. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we use quaternions on every single joint. Mm -hmm. So representation in 3D space. Yes. Uh, so you can indeed also get like the, the sort of twisting rotation. Which is, yeah. For the metacarsal bones, mm -hmm. like a 3D twist in, especially the thumb, like that's on the full rotary joint as well. Yep. So. Okay, so from that, we can get really accurate motion tracking. Yeah, so this is something you all find fun to see as well. So this is what we get for the raw endpoint AI. So sure. These are the sensors in space. Mm -hmm. And from there, we build up the raw skeleton model. Okay. So these are the quaternions. You can already see like this, mm -hmm. this sort of knuckle. Yes. Not only moving but rotating and curling inwards and i think you said it's 25 of these that you have 25 data points so it's yeah. not really 25 degrees of freedom it's it's 25 locations because each one of those points is a quaternion and a position in space yeah. so that's a lot that's basically six degrees of of information at each point even though a lot of them are basically not moving still the information is there yeah and and of course also the wrist joint which we also um when you put it towards the skeleton measuring full rotation because of an imu that sits okay the I, oh it's the imu that's getting that not the tracker exactly okay that's interesting okay so you get that you can get the, the full motion um this is a good uh, a question we always have how many degrees of freedom does the human hand really have yeah. how many is it so um it really depends on how you want to structure in the fire so you get mm -hmm. pretty piece of freedom on the wrists I don't count those, you know? Yeah, I say. Like, yeah. Um, so then you would end up with 22 degrees of freedom. Which okay. Is just, just okay. include the wrist. Okay. So if you do that, it's 25. Sometimes I've heard 27, but a lot of times, a lot of times you hear 27, they're actually including the wrist. So 
these two metacarpals, mm -hmm. like even though they can technically rotate on a 2D plane, they never in the work. Yeah. do. So they, they stick in sort of like a 2D plane. Yeah. Like these two uh, fingers. But you could include them as well. If you go 27, you could say that these two metacarpals could rotate technically. Yeah. In practice, they never do. Yes, yes, yes. I so agree. I, so I, th I think that's why it originally. That's why there's a debate. Um, it's yeah. maybe 27 from a practical standpoint, maybe 25. But if you're going to build a hand, it ends up being like 21, 22. The most important thing is that if I'm building an 11 DOF hand or 22 DOF hand, you make sure I have enough information. Yeah. You're not. Yeah. You're not giving me less data than I need. You may be giving me more, but that's okay. Yeah. That's on so me when I build my hand. That's also with the all bionics hand, for instance, as mm -hmm. a six dot hand. Yep. So then you need to retarget from mm -hmm. 22 down to six. Exactly. Exactly. But the data is there. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So um, this is pretty interesting. I assume the gloves come in different sizes. Yeah. I did take a look at your website. So, so it looks like it's that's a, a pretty nifty feature that sits on it. So you can take the top module off. Okay. Yeah. And then it's fully modular. So you can just swap between users to a different size. Ah, that quickly. And I understand you can also remove these sensors. You can pull them out and you can wash this? Correct. Okay, so you, you don't have to worry about that. After a while, the glove is going to get maybe a little beat up and dirty, a little bit sweaty, more than likely than anything else. So they are washable and very easy to put in. Now, these are the sensors that are tracking. Let's talk about haptics. Exactly. Yeah, this is new, coming out in Q1 of next year. Um, already showing it off at the events. It's a linear resonant actuator. LRA, mm -hmm. so the same fiber motor you would find in a mobile phone, uh, and it provides sensory feedback back to the user. So let's say you're in a teleoperation setting, the robot has pressure sensors in their hand, uh, and then you map the input from those pressure sensors to the output on the haptic. On that, and then you know. Yeah. yeah. So we modulate intensity, so the harder you press, the more vibrations you would feel. Or if you're in a simulated environment, you do it based on detection. So uh, yeah, collision detection. Yeah. Uh, so that when you touch the objects, you get a vibration. You know, or exactly. you do interpenetration or the amount of force you're applying. Uh, and that really helps with that perception in virtual reality. So if you're in a simulation environment, you know, I touch the object, I grab the object, I release the object. Sort of like a virtual mouse tree. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, uh, when are we going to have Ready Player One level of happiness? No. When do you think that's going to happen? when we reinvent physics okay so okay. The, the thing with the human hand and that's always something that really uh, amazes me is we have so much sensory inputs mm -hmm. in our hands for four and four sensors we can feel direction we can uh when you're holding an object you can sense if you're slipping and yeah. then in your nervous system make the decision or if you're you gonna like Tighten your grip or release it. Mm -hmm. uh, all those sensory inputs all sit within the hand. So whenever you would want to put haptics, it's always going to be external to the hands. And then those external factors are going to limit your range of motion if you don't get them down to like the micron. So the reason or like the reasoning behind it is that you would have, want to have micron level uh, haptics that don't impede on any type of range of motion, mm -hmm. and then combined with a rich haptic texture that provides heat, cold, uh, friction, direction, it, pressure. It's a lot. So I, you need to I, make choices. It, you need to make it, trade -off. It's probably going to be a Neuralink uh, implant at that so point. At that, point, at if that you, point, yeah. If you really want to go ready player one haptics, yeah, yeah. you need to fool the brain. Exactly. That's all I have. But is. with simulated haptics, like driver mm -hmm. motors, you can already get very far with that. So oh, it doesn't yeah. need to be one-on-one -on -one for it to be effective. Yeah, I, I agree. It's uh, almost getting you like 80% of what you need. Exactly. And you know, the old rule is that 80% you can get with 20% of the effort. Yeah. But that last 20% is where the majority of the effort's going to go into. So you get a lot of benefit from that already. So okay. that's the design philosophy of right. Manus is we want to make gloves that people can wear for 24 yeah. hours. Okay. And not be encumbered just have a lightweight product that they can use for an extended period of time sure. uh, and have the full range of motion. Yeah. So um, this is available now. I can what, just buy it on the website? Or so it goes order? in a quote, but it goes in a quote. And approximately how much would this cost me? So pricing sits around 9K 
okay, US dollars okay. for a set, including software, yeah. and then for the haptics version, it's a thousand more. A thousand more. And it's, it's available now? Or? Uh, buy now, ship Q1. Okay, Q1. So it's coming very soon. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right. Any other uh, questions I should have asked? Um, I think everything concerning the product you've covered. Okay, good, good. All right. So thank you very much, Martin. And we'll, yeah. be, we'll be seeing you in Eindhoven. Yeah, come by. Come by the office. Absolutely. Have a visit. And then we can show you all the sort of cool stuff we're working on, on robotic setups and whatever you need. Okay, will do. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah.